um welcome everyone thank you so much for watching this video um we have professor lance fong with us he's an avid and a veteran ieee volunteer who needs no introduction to all of us we'll be having an interesting conversation with him uh professor lance welcome okay good evening good morning i don't know wherever you are but i just thank you very much uh, have been there for, for this invitation and i welcome all to this interaction oh, amazing amazing professor so um so there's going to be a few questions that i'm going to ask and uh, we also have uh, a different segments of this specific discussion to make it interesting for the audience i'm super excited about it um let me put forth my first question to you without any um further delay right so you have an amazing journey as an engineer and as a volunteer so we would like to know your experiences and i'm sure it will add a lot of great learning experience for all of us um so are you excited about this conversation um with us well of course well i i always want to share my experience well on another webinar well i'm glad that well, we are doing this video series but because what well, the main objective i would like to let the members know about myself well i always well believe something is well, what you see is what you get and as they are interested with my journey and i also want to share with them well so that they can also have the journey with me together so that we can spend some time so i'm just going to spare a little bit time well, to share part of my snapshot of my uh, journey and my professional journey as well thank you that's wonderful that's amazing thank you so much for sharing so let me begin uh um, my first set of questions will help us understand more about you as a person right so a typical typical uh, typical starter of how we uh, i mean how we start any interview tell us a bit about yourself how did you get started as an engineer professionally what was your journey so far um as a person who's much involved with the professional career so yes professor we look forward to hear from you So looking at my way here, so you know that it's going to be go back to a very long, long time. But I started off of my uh, professional training. Uh, it wasn't really as an engineer, but it was a technical training as part of the Marine uh, Electronic uh, Course, Officer Course, in the Hong Kong Polytechnic in 1972. Incidentally, Hong Kong Poly became the Hong Kong Poly U in 1994, and I graduated in 1974. Actually, I I take out one of my old photos. Well, so this is the one in the Hong Kong Polytechnic. Uh, 1974. Oh wow! That's nice. So you can imagine now it's all over. Well, close to 50 years old. <laughs> well, uh, that was a time that uh, we have a, a a group of students, and the course was was pretty tough. We start off with around 20 something students. Uh, it was a two year course, and then come to second year, only 15 left behind. And then, well, I was one of the four graduated in the first trial out of the group of 15. And straight away, I got a job on the next day. As soon as I got my certificate, I went to see the company, and the company asked me, "Can you get on board? You got your passport with you or not?" So I get on board on, on my first ship um, on the first day, and I spent around one year on this uh, ship called uh, American Maine. And again, I got to show photo show you. Well, the reason is I'm always looking at myself. I really wish I go back to my old time. Well, with my size, okay. But what I find <laughs> is really amazing that is really in terms of the technology have changed uh, over the years. So I spent one year well, on the ship American Maine, and then well, I, I spent another year well over in the uh, UK in Bristol, uh, Brunel Technical College, because I received a study leave, and I studied for a, a high diploma in marine electronics and radar maintenance uh, from 1975 to 76. And then well, after I finish, I go back to another year and bought another ship well, called Eagle Arrow. So this was a, another ship. Well, you can see that it's very similar in the sense that well, I'm not too sure you can see it. Okay. Well, but yeah, what, yeah, of course, maybe, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what I'm basically is really in terms of technology, the change over the years. If you can see the one behind me, it was a transmitter, as big as a refrigerator. So you oh, can. Oh wow! Okay. That. Yeah, it's, it's using valves, uh, vacuum valves. I'm not too sure how many of you young guys over there know what's a vacuum valve, but I'm able to communicate well from the tip of Africa, uh, South Africa, uh, Cape Town, uh, to London, well with Morse code. Okay, obviously, well, the trans the 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 rate is very slow. Uh, talking about well, twenty words per minute, but then again, it's quite amazing at that time. But the thing about it, I was the only one on board the ship uh, able to communicate uh, to the whole world. So it was quite an amazing time. And after well, one year, I spent another year on another ship, well, uh, called the um, Falcon Arrow. 
And as a matter of fact, at that time, I've already married, and this is my uh, wife, and then we spent one whole year on this ship called Falcon Arrow. And it was a brand new ship. Well, it was um, a commissioned from, uh, from the shipyard in Chiba. Uh, and then, well, from 1977 to 78, well, we spent one whole year on that. And once again, well, I, I really have the urge to do a further study. And I continue my undergraduate study, well, uh, in maritime technology at the University of Wales, Institute of Science and Technology. And I graduated with a first class honor in 1981. And at that time, I, I decided to continue the further study to do a master of engineering course in the system test technology in 1982. And as soon as I finished my study, well, I received an offer from the Singapore Polytechnic. And I started teaching over there, well, in the Department of Nautical Studies and the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Well, so I was having a good job and uh, having a family, having a young family as well. But then again, I always feel that, well, something I would like to improve myself. So I started to apply for scholarship and um, I got a scholarship in Australia. And I was fortunate, well, to be accepted by my late supervisor, uh, Professor uh, Kit Po Wong. And I started my doctorate study in 1988. Well, the topic was made uh, based on artificial intelligence, neural networks, and a uh, rule-based system, knowledge-based system. And it was mainly the application areas in the electrical power engineering. But then again, well, after I, I, I was on full-time scholarship well, for a few months, I received another well, lecturing position in Curtin University. So I changed from a full-time study to, to full-time well, work and study by part-time. And uh, well, with the grace of God, and I graduated because well, I have to handle the, the, um, the study, my family, uh, and so all the teaching responsibility. And I finished my study well, in 1993. So effectively, I completed my PhD well, in full time in two and a half years or so, uh, under three years. So well, after that, I more or less devoted most of the time well, to my two beautiful daughter. And then by the year two, uh, 2003, I have another offer uh, given to me from the School of IT information technology well, in Murdoch University. But it was a bit of a challenge because I changed well, from the engineering discipline well, to information technology. And, uh, but I'm really glad uh, with that uh, uh, acceptance of the offer. Because of that particular role, not only I just do teaching and research and postgraduate supervision, and also I have included responsibilities like management, administration, and I also uh, even as a well, director well, of a research center. And uh, I also serve on the University Senate, on the University uh, Academic Council, uh, Associate Dean of Research, Postgraduate Research Director. So I, I also have the opportunity to collaborate and liaise with international, well, uh, other universities and also promotion and also work with the other government department as well. So all, most of all, uh, but I, I really treasure my, and, and my privilege and honor of working with over 30 or so postgraduate uh, particular doctorate student, and many of them from uh, different parts of the world. So I have uh, retired in 2015, but I'm still within the university because I have received an appointment as emeritus or professor. So this is an honorary position. So that means that I'm still part of the university and I still co-supervise and, and uh, being an investigator in, in the research project. But nevertheless, it's not going to be full-time. So really, I have my freedom. And that's why I can also dedicate my time to to um, IEEE as well. I see my, my motto in life is uh, learning has no boundary. And really that's exactly what's happening now. I can even well, devote my time to learn something new as well. And that's what I've been doing every day. And in particular, my involvement with IEEE. So that will be a quick snapshot well, of all my 30 plus years of uh, professional uh, work as well. Wow, wow. So that's a, that's a lot of uh, diverse experiences all together, right? I think starting from your journey, like, um, as a, I mean, as a professional to growing into a professor, uh, MA, MA writer, prof, emeritus professor, right? So that's, that's really inspiring, uh, so professor. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I think you also mentioned about this. We all know that you are a veteran IEEE volunteer and your contributions to the world's uh, biggest technical professional organization is well known to a lot of people. But I am curious about how it all started. Like, how did you become involved with IEEE and how did you start contributing to this professional organization and what um and, and and the whole story behind it right so yes professor you look forward to hear your thoughts on that so in a way that i consider that you guys are much more fortunate than me than because of when you well during your undergraduate stage well you're already involved with IEEE but during my, my time when i was in the united kingdom well the local professional body was IERE 
uh, the Institute of Electronics and Radio Engineering, and also the IEE Institute of Electrical Engineers. And then subsequently, they, they have merged and then become IET as well. But nevertheless, uh, during my, young, my younger days, well, when I was studying in undergraduate, I don't really have much opportunity to uh, involve with IEEE. It's only when I come to Australia in 1988 and I started my PhD, and one particular topic that caught my attention was neural networks. And then, well, I, I use it in part of my thesis, and I get involved with one of the special interest group in neural networks in the Western Australia section. And from then on, I begin well, to attending the meetings and listening to the talks. So, and then I start presenting papers in the conferences as well, and also try to help him out uh, as a volunteer in some of the local conferences. So, but in terms of uh, getting uh, as a volunteer, it was my lay supervisor who encouraged me uh, to be involved with the section. So I started to serve in various positions. So starting off from as a committee members and sort of serving in different roles. And gradually I took up the roles of, in the executive officer, well, like the uh, treasurer's uh, secretary, vice chair, and then the chair in 19, uh, 20 and, uh, 2001. So I also have been actively involved as a student branch counselor in Curtin University. And when I well, came over to Murdoch University and also started the student branch over there as well, and I also be involved with a lot of the technical society chapters as well, like um, Computer Society, Communication Society, SMC. And uh, well, I always consider SMC stand for System Man and Cybernetic well, Society as my home society because I have the longest uh, membership with, uh, with the society. And I also have the honor of being elected as one of the member at large uh, for two terms, for six years altogether, 2010 to 2015, on the board of governors of SMC Society. As regards to Region 10 or Executive uh, uh, Committee, because I have served in the uh, section chair, so I have been a, a member of the Region 10 uh, Committee. And then well, I was involved in the Australian Council as a chair. So again, um, I, I have been uh, involved with the Region 10. And from uh, between 2007 uh, 2008, uh, I was invited to be the special project coordinator. In particular, at that time, well, I helped out with the coordination of the section Congress over in uh, Montreal. Um, oh, sorry, in Quebec City at that time. So on the other hand, well, during the past six and seven years, well, since come today, well, uh, especially before my retirement, I've be have, I be come to have more involvement in the, some of the major areas. Well, what is on the technical program integrity committee, conference quality committee, new initiatives committee, and I've been chairs for all those well, committees. And I consider they are quite important roles well, in the IEEE. And in 2018, uh, I'm appointed as a chair of the uh, Region 10 Conference Quality and Management Committee. And for these two years, 2019 and 20, I'm the chair of the Region 10 Educational Activities Committee. So you can see my volunteer well, service has been a long time association. And I really value so much opportunity to interact with the fellow volunteers. Uh, I've learned so much uh, from the leaders as well. And I also uh, feel very privileged I'm able to nurture and uh, mentor the new members and the volunteers. So this has been, a, a, again, another snapshot Although, of course, there are a lot of other small committees ad hoc, I didn't really mention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. It was uh, quite fascinating to hear your journey. I think, um, in fact, I think we can also understand the enormous value IEEE adds to your professional life, uh, especially by looking at your experiences, right? Starting as a student volunteer to emerging as one of the dedicated professional volunteers. Um, thanks again for sharing that. So uh, my next set of questions are around uh, your candidature coming uh, for the upcoming IEEE Region 10 2021-22 director elect um, role, right? So would you be willing to answer some questions around those lines if you're fine, Professor? Sure, I'm happy to do so. Sure, Professor. Thank you. Thanks, so thanks a lot. So my first question is, of course, on um, this broader topic called leadership, right? So how do you describe your leadership style? And what are the things that you think uh, you are bringing to the table, uh, especially as a team leader, right? Uh, leading uh, uh, one of the largest agents of IEEE, if you are elected as the Region 10 Director for the year 2023 and 24. Okay. When I look at the word leadership, actually, well, I pick up the word ship, S-H-I-P. As you have heard from my earlier experience working on a ship, I really see it's the same thing in working on a ship. Well, you really need uh, all the crew members well, on board, all that on hand. Of course, uh, you have a captain, but then again, the captain is not the only one to make the ship work, and really everyone is involved. 
So really, if I have to share uh, my uh, profession as well and, and my association with uh, IEEE, well, I believe that I, I have the strength that I have been long association. I got a very good understanding of the IEEE structure, the, uh, the operational process, well, the missions and the visions, and also most importantly, uh, I've been involved in some of the important areas of the IEEE operation, as you have heard, that on the conference areas, on the papers quality committees, and also like the uh, support for the new initiatives, well, they are the ones that have been instrumental well, in, in uh, supporting those uh, major uh, emerging technologies, what we see today, where we take it for granted. But they are really the engine well, behind the, the fourth industrial well, revolution. So, and also uh, on, the, on the local scene, I have been involved with the local section well, all these uh, years. I never give up uh, any single year. And also on the technical society itself and also various uh, committees. In particular, the new initiatives committee is under the board of directors as well. So on that basis, well, I do see myself, I have the, the network, I have the contacts, I have the understanding of how to make things work as well. And in particular, I, I see myself, I have the personality that I enjoy working with people. And after all, I always tell everyone that IEEE is a member's organization. It is the member they make up of the organization. So it is not really depending on the leaders itself, but rather it is how or to encourage, well, to motivate and to recognize the work of the volunteers. Well, for the benefits of the members and for the community is more important. And honestly, I, I don't really, well, believe in just simply having some fancy titles and a very hollow slogan. The most important thing is you just have to make things work and also have to respect one another. So as respect to my leadership style, and I don't really think that I have one single style because, well, it all depends on the situation and the people you work with. Well, for example, if I'm dealing with the members of the executive committee, really they are experienced people, they're mature people, they're, they're professional. So I, I, I have to listen, well, I, I value what the suggestion and the ideas because they are the ones well, that they know more than me as well. So I will, I will respect well, the input and I have to work collectively uh, on the wisdom and the decision. And on that basis, I would sort of call this one a democratic you know, process, a democratic style. But on the other hand, well, there are also situ situations that deal with young and you know, maybe less experienced members. In that case, I would have to adopt a coaching style. On that basis, more or less, I really have to help them, uh, lead them uh, a little more closer so that I um, have to check up with them, see how they're getting on, well, have there any questions. Just, they need to be assured that they are on the right track as well. And also, you need to give them the credit so when credit deals. And the best of all, well, actually, if you ask me, I'd rather to have adopt a lazy fair well style. Because I believe that if everyone is doing the right things, everyone knows about what are we here for. Well, we understand what is the mission and vision of IEEE. But well, we are advancing technology for the benefits of humanity. So we are dealing with technology. But ultimately, well, the one we want to contribute to are the community and the humanity. So this is the, the things what I believe in. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, Professor. I think um, I really actually, um, I mean, it was quite interesting for me to hear about the democratic style as well as the coaching style, right? I think there are definitely um, some, some, I mean, that's a lot of learnings for us, of course. Um, a follow-up question on that, um, again, this is my personal question too, right? Um, you mentioned about coaching for, especially for young people, and uh, here's my question on that. What are some of the valuable insights or suggestions or advice that you would like to offer to young volunteers and members in IEEE who want to contribute more, grow more, as well as, um, I mean, engage with this community more? Okay, well, what I, what I can share is, well, I wouldn't really come to, well, the young uh, leaders uh, or the young professional telling them, okay, what I know the best, honestly, I don't. But I have to admit that, well, the younger generation, but they know a lot of things that uh, we also don't know. Okay, well, they also need to face a lot of challenge. But I, I have to acknowledge my observation on the younger leaders, especially through these uh, webinars and all this interaction, well, through the uh, social media, they answer the question. Well, I can say that I observe that they are very energetic, they're technically they're very savvy. And as a matter of fact, it's only through these three months that I know how to operate a Zoom, how to operate a video and all those things. And also, I, what I find, well, more amazing is they, they do have a group of view. And I think it is very important because for us, well, we should not really just limit ourselves well, to our just, although well, we work uh, around our closer proximity, but ultimately it's the whole world. We only got one world, we only got one earth. We, have, we do not have a planet B. So we really have to well, watch out for one another. So, and I also see that they have the urge to be successful as well. And I think it is also important. We all need to set the goals and we need to set the plan. 
So I, I'm really pleased to see my generation of the IEEE members that we will have the confidence that we are able to pass the batons well to the next generation of young members or young leaders and the young professionals. And it's all including from all the affinity groups or like the um, young professional women, engineering, graduate student members, student members. And I believe they are the one that they will make IEEE flourish and fulfill the missions and vision. So in terms of advice, I wouldn't say advice, maybe just some suggestion. And I confess that, well, they are facing a challenge. Well, they're much different in this era well, compared to mine. If you take a look at my career aspect, that really I can say that, well, it's quite unusual nowadays. Well, just simply stay in a job for over 10 or 15 years. No, well, it's not happening. We've been looking at the figures that people have to change, expect to change the job seven times or 12 times and even more. So, but it doesn't matter how many times, as long as you are good, then you'll be good. Okay, so in, in case of someone's suggestion, I just summarize it. I would say the first one is set your priorities. And you have to admit that you can't do all, okay? You have to set the priorities. Well, the important thing in life, your family, your own health, well, your loved one, okay? So what are the dangers of people having just tipped the balance? Well, it's good. You're being the very enthusiastic in doing all the things you dedicate. But well, don't get yourself burned out. This is one of the main dangers I see that a lot of young professionals, they get very excited at the beginning. But then again, well, I don't want them to affect the job, especially if you're student members, you do not, I do not want you to affect your study. And well, your, your, your career, your job just for IEEE is, should not be the way at all. Everyone need to set your priorities right, okay? And second thing is, well, do not look at leadership well, as the goal and ends. Well, I know that well, sometimes I feel that, well, well when I was asked well, to share in a, in, in a webinar according to leadership uh, through volunteering, I have a little bit of issue on that one. Well, no doubt that well, we, are, we are able to train the volunteers to be leaders, but not everyone will need to be a leader as well. Well, actually, you're a leader. You're a leader of your own self. You're a leader of your own destination, of your own destiny. So one thing you must realize is, well, volunteering does not guarantee you a leadership position. You have to face that, okay? And also, it all depends, right? It doesn't matter the title. Even in my case, well, I can see the possibility I could lose as well to one of my esteemed colleagues as well. And I believe that every one of them will stand an equal chance and also they, they, they deserve a position as well. So I will have no regret. Well, but then again, this is an IEEE organization. It's a member organization and I respect the choice of the members. So, so my advice is do not well, be discouraged or dis disappointed. Well, if you do not get a position or leadership or you think you have the reward to deserve it, but just simply look at it well, as a volunteer. And also, I think it's also utmost important that every one of us as a member of IEEE, we need to abide and uphold the code of ethics. But the, the latest code of ethics have been updated, well, as passed in the uh, Board of Directors in June uh, 2020. Well, I just simply cannot place enough emphasis on that because it is the foundation, not only for IEEE, but also for humanity. Just imagine the whole world, well, is being operated without the ethics. So I posed this question before. Well, can you imagine a society with technologies, but no ethics? But similarly, if I ask another question as regard to leadership, do you really want the leaders, the volunteers, the members without ethics? So I think that it's quite a sobering question for everyone to ask. I believe this is fundamental. And, and I, I always have the passion to promote this and remind everybody to this. So these are some of the so-called advice, well, suggestion to the members. Thank you. Those are, those are really, really powerful lessons, right? I think um, the point around uh, trying out and the point around volunteering especially i think those are really thought provoking and i'm sure like a um, lot of young leaders and young members will find them really really helpful um thanks a lot for sharing that professor yeah